the Maplewood Manor in Ballston Spa, New York. My name is Wayne Clark uh, from the New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs. Sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and your date and place of birth, please? Vincent Bush, James Boschetti, <coughs> born in Mechanical, New York. And what year were you born? 1924. Did you attend school in Mechanicville? No, Stillwater. Stillwater? And uh, did you graduate from high school? Well, they gave me my diploma. I enlisted in my senior year. I enlisted in the Air Force. Okay. And, and what year was that? 1942. All right. And um, let me ask you, uh, do you recall where you were when you heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor? Usually most people were either at a, a ball game or at a movie or they heard it on the radio. Was, well, it was on a Sunday, I remember that. Yeah. And I think, I think it was, uh, we were kids, we were kids, we were playing ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were out playing ball. All right. And uh, once Pearl Harbor was attacked, did you see any changes immediately as, as to what life was like back then for you? Were there a lot of people going into the service? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of my friends were going into the service, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were enlisted. Were, uh, were, was there a lot of rationing No. at that time? No, there was, there was, mm -hmm. it was going to start, though. Mm -hmm. Did you participate in any kind of scrap drives or anything when you were in, in school? For scrap metal or no. paper or anything? No. Okay. And uh, upon graduation from high school, you went no, into... I didn't graduate. Uh, but they gave me my diploma. My father went up and got my diploma. Okay. I was in the service. My, se my senior year, I went in the service. I see. Okay. And um, you went into the Air Force. What made you pick the Air Force? I don't know. We just the Air, It was the Air, Army Air Corps then. Uh-huh. I know. I just liked the Army, the Air Corps. So I wanted to fly. Had you ever flown before? No. No? Mm -hmm. And where did they send you for your basic training? Or basic training in Miami Beach, Florida. Mm -hmm. Was that your first time away from home? Yes. What was that like for you? Well, I, I don't know. It was a fun experience, but you know. Uh huh. Were there anyone uh, down there from your school, or no? So you were all by yourself, yeah. but down not knowing months. anyone. Okay. And how long was that basic training? One one month. Mm -hmm. Did you stay in a hotel? Yep, planning a hotel. What did you think of the training? Was it adequate? Well, being a kid, you know, it's mm -hmm. hard to say. Yeah, it was, it was all right. Mm -hmm. And once you graduated uh, from basic training, whereabouts did they send you? Okay. Where did you go after basic training? Basic tra training went to Emerald, Texas for uh, mechanic school, six months. And did you find that difficult? No, not really. Mm -hmm. Well, it was difficult because I'm away from home, you know. Yeah. Now, what kind of aircraft did you work on? B-17s. Oh, B-17s. Anything uh, else or just...? No, just B-17s, flying fortress. Did uh, you receive any specialized training? Was it engines or just general no, aircraft? General, general. Did you get to uh, go up in the B-17? Mm. Oh, yeah. Not there I didn't. Uh-huh. In Las Vegas. All right. And I went to gunner school. All right. Now, what did you do on your time off down in Texas? I <laughs> didn't have much time off. No? No. We seven days a week. Six days, it was our, six days and I think then seven days. I forget. Uh-huh. it was, when we went on nights, it was six nights. On days or seven days. Mm -hmm. See, we went from nights to days and days to nights. Were, were there classes continually going on 24 oh, yeah, hours a day? Uh, no. Jeez. I don't remember that. Okay. How was the food down there? Good. I don't remember. Uh-huh. And what kind of uh, quarters did you have? Were you in barracks or yeah, tents? Yeah, barracks. Uh, double deck. Okay. All right. And um, you said the school was about six months long? Yeah. Mechanic school, mm -hmm. six months. 
And when you graduated from mechanics school, they shipped us right to because that was, they want, we were Air Force gunners. They okay. shipped us shipped me and about three hundred of us to Las Vegas. Okay, gunnery school. Did you get any kind of mechanics uh, wings when you graduated from mechanics school? No, they didn't give me a wings for mechanics. No, give you a wings for flying. Okay, so so you went to uh, gunnery school. The gunnery school yeah. in Las Vegas. Yeah. And got my wings and the sergeant stripes. Oh, okay. And, and what was, oh, while you were in mechanic school, were you promoted to corporal or? No, nothing. You were, a, we're all privates. You were all privates, okay. And uh, what was the gunnery school like? Well, it was, it was some fun, but it was tough. Flying over the mountains, you know, at targets, shooting at targets. Okay. Now you flew on B seventeen? No, at, not there, no AT sixes. Oh AT sixes? Yeah. So you flew in the back seat of the Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. With fifty caliber guns and machine guns. Mm hmm Did they uh give you training on maintaining that fifty caliber like I I've oh. heard stories about uh blindfolding the students and yeah, they sure did. Okay. And had to take the strip and put them back together again. Mm hmm All that, you know. Did you train on any other kind of weapons no. there? No. You didn't receive any type of rifle training there? Well, a lot when I went to gunner school, yeah. At, uh, uh, gunner school, then uh, we trained with the 50 caliber machine guns. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. I, heard, I had heard that uh, some of the uh, students, uh, they taught them skeet shooting, too. For, just, you know, so they, they would be able to, to follow a target. Oh, yeah. And, okay. They had a, had a target on the railroad tracks, quite a, I don't know how much, quite a, far off, and they'd go by and you have to and you fire at a uh, target on it. Uh-huh. Uh, did you fire at any, what they call, tow targets? Yeah. At the end oh, of the yeah, air? Yeah, in the air, yeah. Okay. Fly underneath, you had to fire at them. Uh-huh. Uh, I shot the target down once. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. So when, uh, when did you graduate from that school, approximately? Uh, the same with them in June, and last, of Ju last part of June. Okay. Because on July they shipped us overseas. All right, and... Uh, no, I'm sorry, July, from there we went to Goldsboro, North Carolina. We took two weeks of tra infantry training. All right, tell yeah. us about that. I, I never heard of them doing that before. They gave you mm -hmm. some infantry training. Two weeks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Two weeks, all all at Jason. Pilots and co-pilots of bombardiers and navigators. They were all upset because we were all together, you know, mm -hmm. enlisted in the, in the offices all together. Uh -huh. The thing that, that that got me excited more than anything else, or excited, got me, you know, mad. Is they give us pup tents to sleep in. When I, that two days we had to go out in the field and sleep, uh -huh. sleep in pup tents. And uh, we put the puppet to two in the pup tent, and they gave us a rope. And I said, to the, the guy's in charge of one of the corporals. I said to him, "What, what the hell is this rope for?" And you'll find out what it's for. If you put it right around the tent. I never heard of it. So I finally told me. He says, "You want to put that around there because rattlesnakes are here, and they won't go over the rope." Really? Yeah. That's why we had to put the rope around. Huh. Now, do you think that training was uh, in case you guys got shot down? Oh, yeah, infantry training, yeah. Yeah. Guys, yeah. Okay. And um, were you assigned to a crew right away? I was never assigned to a crew. Okay. So you went through the infantry training yeah, for two and weeks? And you do two weeks, and they sh shipped us to uh, New Jersey. Uh, Fort Dix, was it? No. What a big place. Oh, jeez, I can't think of the name of the was camp. Was that uh, Monmouth? No. Oh. Okay. I can't think of the name. It, it, it's in New Jersey. We were there about three or four days and then right overseas. So you didn't get any leave time to go home no, or anything? No, no, no. No? But you were a sergeant at that point. Yeah, when I graduated from Las Vegas Gunnery School, 
We all made sergeants. And you received your gunnery wings? Yeah. No, right there. Same day. Everything same day. Okay. Now, how did you go overseas? <laughs> in a freighter. In a freighter? Gee. 23 days it took us to get over there. And did you go on a... So you zigzagged. Did you go on a convoy? A convoy, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That would be true, 400 bolts. Mm -hmm. A lot of them all. I did a lot of them. Did you get seasick at all? No. I never got seasick or air sick. And uh, what was the food like on the boat? It was all right. It was all right. Mm -hmm. All right, I can remember. It wasn't okay. bad. Yeah, and, the freighter was only a bunch of us on the freighter. Mm -hmm. And uh, whereabouts did you land? Barry, Wales. And did we, were, we were there about a day and a half. One day, we were there one day, then they they sent sent most of us to, uh, not most of us, they split us all up. And they sent me in and eight other guys to uh, Alkenberry. Mm -hmm. And then we were assigned. Now, now, was this in uh, England? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. From Barry, Wales, there's England. Okay. And uh, then they, they formed a squadron. And the commanding officers of the uh, a group at Alkenberry, he called us in, eight of us. He said, fellas, he says, we're short of mechanics and we're going to start another squadron. So we have four squadrons in the group. He says, there's eight of you that got, you got mechanics training. He said, will you accept, you know, to be a mechanic instead of flying? And we said, we'll give you your flying pay. You can have your flying pay, but you got to fly four hours a month. Mm -hmm. We accept the eight of us. Uh -huh. We accepted it. When I wound up being a pl uh, play chief, from corporal to sergeant to mass tech sergeant to, to line chief. Okay. And um, now, what was the? I know you were part of the Eighth Air Force, but do you recall what the unit was? What bomb group? Or? Oh, first air division. First air division. First air division. Okay. And. Um, you were a mechanic, and, and how many aircraft? Uh, Just one. You take your one by four mechanics. You see it right there. Okay. Now that one aircraft. Um, was two, there's uh, was let's see, uh, or was it 19 in the group in that squadron? Uh huh. And, and every mechanic had his own airplane. No, 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 no. I had four mechanics under me. You had four mechanics under you. Yeah. Okay. Did your unit uh, lose many aircraft? Oh, easy, I guess so. Schweinfurt Raid? Hmm. I guess so. Now, as a mechanic, uh, what kind of problems did you encounter with the returning aircraft? Shack, uh, sh uh, plaque uh, attack on the, on the ship, you know, holes in the ship. Mm -hmm. And we had to take one guy out of the bolter that got shot, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, so so you did a lot of sheet metal work? No, 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 mechanic, just mechanic work. Sheet okay. metal work, they left that, the first echelon did that uh, okay. in, the, in the hangar. But they had sheet metal workers oh, there? Oh yeah, but we didn't do that. Okay. Were you guys kept pretty busy? With oh yeah, oh yeah. Now what did you think of the engines on, on those... Uh, Aircraft? Did you have many problems with them? They were Pratt and Whitney's, weren't they? Pratt, Whitney, and Studebaker. Studebaker made engines. I didn't know that. Yeah, Studebaker. There was another engine we had too. Pratt and Whitney. Pratt and Whitney. Yep. And uh, were there right engines also? Right cyclones? No, we. Uh, I don't. I don't think we had them. Okay. Uh, most of Pratt and Whitney. We had mostly Pratt and Whitney and. Uh, Studebaker, and there was another one, Carl was the other way down. Can't think of it now. Did you uh, get to fly on any missions? Oh, no, no, I didn't fly missions, but I flew a lot though. Uh huh. Maintenance test flights? Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of, a lot of, had about 13 hours, 1300 hours flying time. Did you really? That's, that's that, a lot of time. Yeah, about that time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, did you ever en encounter any of the enemy? No. Mm -hmm. And what were your 
living conditions like? Did you move around or stay at that one base? No, I stayed at one. Well, from Mockenberry, we went to Paddington. That was our permanent base. Mm -hmm. but I stayed right there till, till the end of the war. Mm -hmm. And how long were you there for? About two years? No, not quite two years. Okay. Year and a half anyway. Mm -hmm. What was uh, what was your daily life like? Your daily routine? Well, get out to the line, fix up line, whatever, whatever. About what what time in the morning did you start? Well, I always get up. We get up around six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Had breakfast and, and head for the line mm -hmm. where the planes were. You know. Do what we had to do on the planes if we had work. If they had, say we were on alert and you had to get the planes ready for a flight. Mm -hmm. If we uh, had a raid, which we had plenty of, let's get up maybe four or five o'clock in the morning to get out to the line. Mm -hmm. Pre flight the engines and all that, and, uh, ready for the crews when they come out, flight crews. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then when you, when you heard that the planes were coming back, did everybody gather to... Oh, we, were, to, we stayed right out in the... We, we had tents out in the field. Uh-huh. Um, on, on a hard, tent, hard stand. We had tents and we would stay in the tents. Mm-hmm. The only time we leave the tent when we go to dinner. Dinner. Because they wouldn't... We knew they'd be gone a long time, you know. Yeah. Flights would take seven, eight hours. But we, most of the time we stayed right there. Mm-hmm. What about the weather? What was the weather like uh, over there? Sometimes real bad. The winter, winters were tough. Kind of tough. Were they? Well, being on an island and mm -hmm. ocean, you know. Mm -hmm. What about uh, time off? Did you get to go into London or? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Leaves, had leaves, three day leaves. Mm -hmm. Then I had, I took a furlough one time, went to Edinburgh, Scotland, uh -huh. with a friend of mine. Yeah, we we did all right. I mean, you know, considering everything. Yeah. Now, did you get to see any USO shows at all? Oh yeah, we had Jimmy C Jimmy Cagney come out of base and uh, Billy Kahn. Remember him? He's a bo he was a boxer. Uh huh. He, he was there. He put on a show. Did you actually get to meet or talk to any oh, of them? No. No. Hmm. So, uh, what did Jimmy Cagney do? Did he he served beer in a, in, a, in our um, officers club. Uh huh. Yeah. Did they let you guys go into the officers' club? No, we no. had our own club, non non com, oh. non commissioner's office. You know, uh -huh. No, you couldn't go in the officers' club. Yeah. What was the food like over there? All right. All right. And uh, what about uh, interactions with the civilians? Did you? Uh, we got along pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you try any of their beer in the pubs? Oh, I guess we <laughs> <laughs> I guess we did. I, I heard they like warm beer over there. That's all it is, yeah. Yeah. Big, big spigots. And women were bartenders. Uh-huh. And big spigots on. Yeah. Did, did, you have a, did you have a lot of guys in your unit uh, marrying English women? Well, my my first sergeant married one, uh -huh. and then I don't know what the hell happened. He, his wife, his his wife got tangled up with a Negro, I guess, or something. I don't know. Oh. And he got to leave, and he came home. He was from Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Sergeant Barcelona, I never forget him. Hmm. He wouldn't talk to us or anything. You no, know, he got a hell of a setback, you know. Yeah. yeah. And he put in, they transferred him back to the States. Wow. Oh. I'll never forget him. Now, what were your officers like? They were good. Mm -hmm. Well, in the Air Force, you couldn't, couldn't beat the Air Force. Yeah. The officers were good. Yeah. Sometimes you go to town, you go to go with the officers. Uh-huh. Yeah. We still mingle. So, did you have uh, basically a a regular like ten hour work day or did you work twelve well, hours or there was no time limit. Uh huh. It only depends well it only depends how your plane come in. Okay. And uh, on the average did your did your planes come back with a lot of damage? Sometimes I had one time but my plane come back with 
all about this big or shell right through the Bombay. Exploded exploded when he got out. Yeah. That that guy's wounded. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What was it like uh, when you heard heard about the well first let me ask you uh, do you recall uh, what it was like when you heard about the death of President Roosevelt? No, we were all shocked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was probably the only president yeah. you had really known. Yeah, we were all shocked. Yeah. yeah. Now what about uh, when Germany surrendered? Oh, we had a big celebration, but we couldn't leave the field. Our um, CO, Colonel Wilson, had crippled a guard all around the field, so we <laughs> we wouldn't go out and go to town and raise hell, you know? Mm -hmm. What, was there any talk about being sent to the Pacific at all? No. No? I don't know if anybody volunteered. I think some of them, some of them volunteered. I don't remember that. That part I don't remember. Well, once we couldn't wait to get home. Once the war ended, uh, though, did the unit continue to fly any missions, training no, missions? Or? No, no. We, uh, when the war was over, we, they took all of us. We, the plane, it flew us all around Germany, showed us. The bomb and all that, you know. Uh huh. And then they, when we got back, and our, our commanding officer volunteered for what they call a green project, and we went to uh, Istres, France. Uh huh. My my uh, group, my commanding officer, volunteered our group, and flying the men from Casablanca to, to uh, uh, Istres, Azores, and back to the States, all oh. high point men. Okay. He volunteered, what they call the Green Project. Mm -hmm. how, how long were you involved with that for? Um, not long. No, I left with, I had a lot of points, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. I left them in, in, in uh, France. When, when did you leave to go back home? Well, let's see. I got home in October, uh, October the 28th or 29th. Of 45? Yeah, 45. How did you get home? Did you fly home no, or fly? Nobody would fly. No? All pilots and co-pilots and bomb it, nobody would fly. No, nobody wanted to fly. They all come back on the boat and okay. we were all drunk by the day around. <laughs> huh. what, whereabouts did you land? Uh, New Jersey. Uh, well, Boston Harbor and uh, Camp Kilmer. Kilmer, Man, okay. In, uh, Boston Harbor, Camp Kilmer, and, uh, and the commanding officer walked us back and when we come back the, the, at the boats of uh, at the uh, fire and water in the air, you know, uh -huh. and all that, you know, celebrations. And we're coming back home. I remember remember that. And then uh, we got to the base of uh, Camp Kilmer. Mm hmm He's like, couldn't think of that name, Camp Kilmer. Is, is that where they discharged you from? Yeah, that's right up from and I got no, I got discharged. Can I get discharged from Port Dix? Jesus, I forgot. Okay. No, I think I. I went over camp from camp. Camp. Come back to camp. Jesus, I forgot. Okay. Well, that's all right. Well, we come back to uh, the commanding officer of the base that we come in on. He greets us all back, you know, and he's, he says, "I got a surprise for all of you. You're gonna have a steak supper and ice cream and everything." But we got that overseas anyway. The Air Force got the best of food, I think. Yeah. Now, yeah. <laughs> once you were discharged, how did you get home? Did you take the train? Yeah, or? I took the train home, yeah. In, uh, New Jersey. And uh, what was it like when you got home? Was there a lot of celebration? Six o'clock in the morning. Home, six o'clock in the morning. I got in Albany, and uh, I forget what time it was, around five o'clock or something like that. I, and I wanted to get a train, but the mechanical, because the trains are running. Yeah. The train going to the mechanical was 8 o'clock, and I thought I was going to wait 8 o'clock. So I called a cab, and the cab took him to my house, my parents' house. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget $12. <laughs> I'll never forget it. Now probably $100. Yeah. What, what was it like when your parents saw you? Well, it was just 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. My dad, they weren't up yet. My mother, my mother was up, and... Uh, she hollered to my father and says, hey, Jimmy's home, Jimmy's home. Hmm. And I'll, I'll never forget my father, when uh, my, one of my brothers used to write, you know, if, when you come home, if you come home, 
be careful, we got a police dog. And he's kind of mean. He's, he's, he, he bites. And he wants a big dog too. But you know, I never thought about it. When I got home in a taxi, I got in a taxi, you know that dog come over, start licking my hand? Huh. As if he knew me all his life. We'll be darn. Now, did you have any other relatives in the service? Yeah, my any brother, brothers? Yeah, my brother Al. And what was he in? He was in the infantry. He got drafted in the infantry. Mm -hmm. He got wounded badly in the Battle of the Bulge. Mm -hmm. Did he make it home all right? Yeah, he made it home. He, he was crippled. Huh. It was a left leg. I think it was a right leg. Yeah, he, he just died here about two years ago. Oh. Two or three years ago. Yeah, he's, he was in the Battle of the Bulge. I saw him when they, <coughs> they brought him back to England. And, uh, and the funny part about it, when they, they brought him to the field hospital, <laughs> one of the police said, he's still here. There was five guys in the, the field, uh, field hospital. Yeah. Five, and they were all from mechanical. And this one guy heard uh, Ali Boschetti, his name was Ali, my brother. Ali Boschetti, they just brought him in. And uh, Joe Lorenzo, I'll, I'll tell you who the guys were, Joe Lorenzo. Paul Connors and uh, John Dom Dominico. No, the other two guys. I think they did. And they all rushed over us and they looked down and, and he was pretty well. I shot through the head. Yeah. And uh, the Duchess said, Push him aside, he ain't going to make it. And uh, one of the guys said, Oh, no, 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 he's going to make it. We'll take care of him. And he did. He took care of him. And, then what, and they got a hold of me. They had a right cross, got a hold of me, you know. So you got to see your brother over Oh, yeah, right in England, yeah. Yeah. And my uh, my uh, pilot flew me down there, down to Manchester. Uh-huh. <clears throat> flew me down there, and, and I went to see him. Eddie Vigo, a neighbor of mine home, he comes to see me once in a while. Uh-huh. I knew he was stationed there. He was in the, uh, the supply. I went over and got him. I said, Eddie, come on. I says, Ali got shot up. Oh, okay. So we... Went to the hospital, feel like, and Ali was, he was crippled, all crippled, he couldn't move or nothing. Yeah. Curse, oh, Ali, Ali, take it easy, take it easy. He was calling the doctor's names, and because, you know, he was out of it. Got, sure. Got shot through the head, oh. see. But he made it, he yeah. got home. No, I'll never forget that. Now, when, when you got home, um, well, let me ask you. Japan, Japan surrendered in uh, August yeah. of '45. Were you still over in Europe at that point? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get home till October. Till October, <coughs> right? Was there a lot of celebration when you knew that the war was totally oh, over? Yeah. Oh, surely. Everybody got drunk. <laughs> Naturally, you know. Uh huh. Now, when you uh, when you got back home, did you? Uh, did you uh, join that, what they call the 5220 club? It was like an unemployment? No, I think I went right to work. I was home for two or three weeks, and I went right to work. And where did you uh, uh, go to work, work? Different places. I uh, knit mill, I worked there for a while. <clears throat> then I, uh, I worked on a, 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 fruit, a fruit stand in Troy. And then I, went to, I quit there, and I went to work in a paper mill. Mm -hmm. And I worked there 25 years. And until you retired? No, I retired from Knowles Atomic. Oh, you retired from Knowles? Yeah. What did you do at Knowles? I was um, uh, NDT, non destructive testing. I was um, the uh, Jesus. Uh, take x rays, what do you call them? Okay. You took x-rays of the joints, you know, the welders. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Did you do any welding at all? No, no. I, w I worked with welders. Yeah. Uh, I inspected her weld. Right, just to make sure there wasn't any cracks yeah, or anything. Yeah, cracks okay. and any in in the indications or anything like that. Oh, I see. Okay. Then I, won I worked on the nose for 10 years. On a, uh, uh, the ski owner. Mm -hmm. In five years, I went to... Uh, they transferred me up to West Milton, and that's was five years or ten years, one or the other. Okay. And I went to West Milton, and I, was, and I retired from there. And what year did you retire? 1986. 86. 
Okay. Did you uh, did you join any veterans organ? Oh, did, did you go to college at all? Or no, no. no. Did you make use of the GI Bill? No. You didn't buy a home or anything. Okay. No. All right. And uh, did you join any veterans organizations? Oh, I belong to Legion. I belong to Legion. There's a see it on the wall there. Yep. Yeah. Actually, if you don't mind, uh, when we get towards the interview, I want to take those pictures down and. And you can hold them and, and talk about them. Um, so you, did you join the VFW too? Or? No, I did, but then I quit the VFW. Okay. I belonged to the Elks. 59, I belonged to, I just got my car, 59 years. Mm -hmm. uh, did you... Uh, belonged to Legion. Did you stay in contact with any of the guys you were in the service with? Yeah, my pilot. Okay. And I don't know what happened. I've been there for two years. <clears throat> I don't know if he passed away or what, I don't know. Ross Davidson, the tallest guy in the picture there. Okay. Did you uh, attend any reunions at all? No. No. Do you belong to the uh, Eighth Air Force Association? Yeah, I get a magazine every month. Okay. Not every month, every two or three months. Okay. All right. And um, let me uh, let me go get those. Let me just stop this for a minute and get those photos. And uh, that's your crew. That's my blind crew, and this is my ground crew. Okay, can you hold that up? Uh, yeah, okay. No, that's good. Now, what's the name of that plane? Uh, Old Shillelagh. Oh, it says Buzz, bu Buzz Buggy, I think. Yeah, but this, is, but this wasn't my ship. I just took the picture on it. Okay. Ship. All ship. right. And uh, can you name the, the crew? Yeah. Okay. Come on. Come on in. Okay, do you want to go ahead and name the crew? Oh, yeah. The first guy. That's Johnny Rutherford. He's, he was a co-pilot. Okay. Uh, Carter Scarry, he was a, a navigator. Ross Davison, he was a pilot. And I don't know his first name. Brian. He was the bombardier. Okay. And the uh, ground crew. Yep. Well, of course, I was a crew chief, and these were my four mechanics. Okay. You see it, right? Yep. Let me just uh, take another shot here. Now, do you know uh, if any of those fellows are still living? Geez, I couldn't tell you. Okay. All right. Okay. How do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? Well, made you appreciate America more than anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, appreciate your family. Okay. Um, did you ever get a chance to go back overseas at all? No. Never did. I could have went, but I, once I got home, that was it. Okay. I stayed put. Okay. All right. Well, is there any uh, anything else you'd like to touch on that maybe we we missed, or any incidents that you can think of? Anything funny or not so funny? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for your interview. Okay.